He's back. Greetings, chem students. This is Mr. Braun, and today we are going to be talking about day two of calculating energy changes at phase changes. So if you remember yesterday, in day one of the notes, we talked about five different areas of a phase change diagram, and I had you copy down directly into your notes this right here. Okay, so why don't you take out where you copy this down so we can reference this from time to time. Okay, so this is going to be very important for us once again today, but I'm going to go back. Here is our new example. We worked an example yesterday. We're going to work a different one today. So here we go. How much energy does it take to raise the temperature of 19.0 grams of water from negative 13.0 degrees Celsius to 55.0 degrees Celsius? So I'm going to give you a second. I'm going to pause the recording. You guys go ahead and write that down in your notes. Welcome back. Okay, so now what we have here, okay, what we have here is going to be a little bit different of a type of a problem because as you can see we're going from negative 13 degrees Celsius to 55 degrees Celsius. Now when I switch over and I look at my diagram, let's say that this is the diagram for water. If you remember, what does water, okay, what does water freeze at? Oh, that is zero degrees Celsius, okay? What is the melting point of water? Well, that is 100 degrees Celsius. Now, all right, with this particular problem, Folks, with this particular problem, do I make it to 100 degrees Celsius? Absolutely not. Where do I stop at? 55 degrees is my highest. So somewhere right in here is 55 degrees Celsius. So when I do this calculation, okay, when I do this calculation, I'm going to do one, okay? Area one, I need to calculate. Area two, I need to calculate. Area three, I need to calculate to 55 degrees. I don't need area four. I don't need area five because I don't get into temperatures high enough to be in those specific areas. So all I'm going to need to do is section one, two, and three to calculate this problem. Well, if we remember, section one, Q is equal to M, the mass, the specific heat of a solid, and the change in the temperature. Section two, Q is equal to the mass times the heat of fusion. Remember, we cannot use any change in temperature because there's no change in temperature. That's zero degrees Celsius, the melting point of water, okay? So we have no change in temperature. That's why we need to use this equation. Once again, now we have a change in temperature. We're increasing temperature again. It's of a liquid, and even though we're only going to right here, there's still a change in temperature. So I'm going to take Q equal to the mass, the specific heat of the liquid, the change in the temperature of the liquid. So where do I get Q solid, Q liquid? Where do I get HF? Once again, I need to go back to my reference table. If you remember, here's our reference table. When we were dealing with water, we dealt with this part of the reference table. Okay. Now, I told you to be aware of this. Remember, I told you to be aware of this because that is in joules per kilogram 
degrees Celsius. That's not what I need for this, so I told you to write this over here. And what we're going to do is we converted these to 2.1. We converted this to 4.186, and we converted this to 2.010. So this is the label right here is the label for all three of those values. Once again, those were the specific heat. Keep that on your data table. You've already got it there. We need to now go up. Okay, we need to now go up and look at the top of the chart. What did I need to know of this? Reviewing this. Heat of fusion. Heat of vaporization. I told you that those labels right there were not the labels we wanted, but it didn't matter. Okay, we were going to change those labels to joules per gram. We're going to get the kilojoules, the kilograms out of there. Those are just joules per gram. So when I'm dealing with water, the heat of fusion for water is 30 or 333 joules per gram. The heat of vaporization of water, reading my chart, 2,000, 2,260. So I have my different values from my chart. I'm going to come back to my PowerPoint presentation and... Here we, whoa, 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 give me a T.O. Give me a T.O. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Get me back. Here we go. Get me back. Get me back. Remember I said that we're only going to do one, two, and three all the way up to here because that's about where 55 is going to be. So when we start this, here we go. We're going to do section number one. Remember on section number one, the equation I use is the energy Q is equal to the mass times the specific heat of the solid and the change in temperature. My mass is 19. My specific heat of the solid is 2.100 joules per gram times degrees Celsius and my change in temperature. Now remember, change in temperature, change in temperature. How am I going to get that? Well, delta T is equal to the temperature final minus the temperature initial. Well, what's my final temperature here? Well, we're going up until we hit that first line, so the final temperature is zero. What is my initial temperature? Well, my initial temperature is negative 13. So zero minus a negative 13 is going to give me 13, because a minus a negative gives me a positive. So that's how I get my 13 degrees Celsius right here. My temperature final is zero. My temperature initial is minus 13. So there we go. When I multiply those values together, I get 518.7 joules. Moving right along. Section 2. Section 2 is where I have the actual melting occurring. So this is my melting point. I don't have a change in temperature, remember, so I need to use the equation. Q is equal to the mass times the heat of fusion. I just went over your reference table with you. We know that the mass is 19.0 grams. My heat of fusion is going to be 333 joules per gram. So when I multiply those two values together, I get 6,327 joules. The final thing I need to do for this particular question is number three, section number three. I go Q is equal to MC of a liquid delta T. Now, once again, okay, my mass is 19.0 grams. My specific heat of a liquid is 4 0.186 joules per gram times degrees Celsius and the final temperature, excuse me, the change in temperature. We're going to do this again. I'm going to work this up here again. Change in temperature is the final temperature. That F is kind of cruddy. Let me get a better F. Minus 
at the initial temperature. Well, what did we start at? Well, we started at zero degrees Celsius. Where did we finish at? Well, in this problem, we finished at 55.0. So what is 55.0 minus zero? Ladies and gentlemen, that is 55.0 degrees Celsius. So when I pop my next screen up here, you're going to see that that's where I got the value right here of 55 degrees Celsius. I plug these numbers into my calculator. 19.0 times 4.186 times 55, and I get the value of 4,374.37. I'm not finished though, because that's correct. I want the total energy. So what I have to do is I have to add up everything. If you remember, there's one, there's two, there's three. What about four and five? Jeez, we didn't even do that because we didn't get the temperature high enough for four and five. So basically all we need to do is add up one through three and then I do so, I get 11,220.07 joules. When I am converting that, okay, when I'm converting that, I need to move my decimal point three places to the left to get it into kilojoules. So as I do so, here's my new decimal point. So that's where I get my 11 point. Two two zero seven zero. Excuse me, eleven point two two zero zero seven kilojoules. I go back to my original question. I see that I need to have three significant figures. So to put this value into significant figures, I'm going to put eleven point two. So final answer, ladies and gentlemen, eleven point two kilojoules. Now, we've got one more example to work, and you're going to find out that I, it's pretty doggone easy, all right? Pretty doggone easy. So, here is what you're going to see on WebAssign also. How many grams of ice at 0 degrees Celsius and 760 millimeters of mercury could be melted by the addition of 2,000 500 joules of heat. I'm going to give you a second here to write that down. Go ahead and pause the video. Once you get it written down in your notes, we'll start it back up. Welcome back, chem students. All right. Now, in order to do this, I'm looking at this. I have some values there. Zero degrees Celsius, 760 millimeters of mercury. I've seen those values before. I just can't put, what? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's it. Those are standard temperature and pressure. So what that is saying is at standard temperature and pressure, zero degrees Celsius, 760 millimeters of mercury, how many grams of ice could I melt if I had 2,500 joules of heat? We're dealing with the heat of fusion here, so we're dealing with section two, all right? We're dealing with section two of our chart because that's zero degrees Celsius for water. Here is my melting point. So what I need to do is I need to take the equation. Q is equal to the mass times the heat of fusion. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take section two. I'm going to take Q is equal to M H sub F. Now, I'm not trying to, to solve for Q, am I? I need to find the mass. So I'm going to rework my equation, and as I do so, I find out that the mass is equal to the energy divided by the heat of fusion. The energy given was 2,500. Heat of fusion for water, I know from my reference table, is... 333 joules per gram. So when I take those values, I take the 2,500 or 2,500, and I divide it by 33, or excuse me, 333, 
So 2500 divided by 333 is going to give me 7.508 grams. I have four significant figures because back in my original question, my joules was given to me in four significant figures because of that decimal makes those two zeros significant. So I have my final answer being 7.508 grams. So what that's telling me is if I have at standard temperature and pressure 2,500 joules of heat, then I could melt 7.508 grams of ice to water. I believe, yep, that is it. So, you are now ready to go on and start working on some more of the web assign. I know we're not doing a lab, but I love this ending so much. We're going to use it here for this one too. Ladies and gentlemen, let's investigate.